Hello, Math 30-2. Today we're looking at continuing our permutations of combinations. We're going part two, which is combinations. So to start off, we're going to look at a more a question that we've looked at before, where we have here's 12 grade a grade 12 class in English. You're required to have three readings. They say the grapes of wrath, the wars, and the bean trees. So Here's poor Steve. Steve has been late many times, returning his books. What up, grade 12, class of 214? So Steve is only allowed to sign out one English book from the school library per month because he's been late bringing them back. So what happens here? If he's doing one at a time, this is technically a permutation because order matters, right? So he signs out one. So in the first day, first time he signs out, he has a choice of three. Once he's done that one, he's not going to, if it was Grapes of Wrath, he's not going to sign out again, so he has two. Then after that, he's done two of them, he only has the last one to sign out, and he's good. So, this is six factorial, also known as, out of three, we are picking three. Which is three factorial all over three minus three factorial. And if you remember, so it's 3 factorial all over 0 factorial. And if we remember, just a quick little reminder, 0 factorial is always equal to 1. Okay, so there we go. Now, now Tariq, he's an excellent student. He's always bringing his books in on time. So how many different ways can he sign out three books? So because he brings his books on time, he's not taking all three out at once. So how many different ways can Tariq sign out his books? Well, he could sign them all out at once. So pretty much we have a combination of three, right? It's three, two, one. But he could take them all out at once. So that combination really doesn't matter. So in the end, he really only has one way of doing it. It's everything at once. So part A, is an example of a permutation, what we learned in the previous four lessons. Part B is an example of a combination. In a combination, order does not matter, and they'll use words like select instead of pick, okay? So it's like selected. That's a combination, selected, okay? I like to think of a permutation starts with a P. Well, it's for picky people. Order matters, you're being very picky. Combination is with a C. Uh, you just choose whatever. Okay, so let's go down here. This one here shows all uh, several of the combinations. So it starts off grapes of wrath and it's showing the combinations, and that's generally what's happening. Key word to notice is selection is for combination. So complete the following statement: the number of combinations is equal to the number of permutations divided by your R factorial. Okay, so divided by your choice. Divided by your choices, or R factorial, okay? Now, or, so permutations is an arrangement of elements in which the order is taken into account. So permutation, order matters, combination, order does not matter. So here's just another few things that they're going to look at, but we're going to skip over that and get to some questions. So, once again, combination, a combination of n different elements taken r at a time. So r must always be greater than n, just like in permutation, because it doesn't make sense. If you only have, let's say, five students, and I want to select seven, how do I select seven students for five to go rafting or something? It just does not add up. I cannot select seven students out of five to go rafting. So r is how many you're selecting, n is your total population that you're choosing from. So r must always be less than n. That's it. So now we look at it. Combination is like a permutation, except order doesn't matter. So we have to divide by that order. So if we look here, this is your formula right there for permutation. That's your permutation, you just divide by r factorial. All right, so this is the formula that you get on your formula sheet, is right there. All right, also some texts will write it like this. 
So you'll see this here instead. Well, that means a combination as well. It's kind of annoying seeing different text like that, but you just have to know it just in case if you see that text. Now, here we go. First example, first real example. So we have three students from class of 10 are to be chosen for a school trip. How many ways can they be selected? Now, we look at this. Three out of 10 being selected for a school trip. How many ways can they be selected? Well, does it matter if you're picked first or third? No, you're still selected. So your order does not matter. So that's how we know this is a combination. So out of 10, we are choosing three. That's all that's happening, okay? So what if that, we have 10 students and 10, so our, like we do our permutation formula, just like what we always did before. And then we must also divide, because if we do this here, this is a permutation, but that says the order of which we pick the students matters. So that's like the three students and then it's factorial. So we have to divide by the order of which we pick the students as well, the three factorial, because the order doesn't matter. Because if we look at it, we had three, so it'd be like three, two, one, because they could be rearranged any ways. We have to divide it by that as well. So what will this give us? Well, we simplify this. I'm going to get nine multiplied by eight. Oops. 10 multiplied by 9 multiplied by 8, all over by 3 times 2. Oh, multiply by 1. Okay, so we continue this here. I am going to end up getting, let me cancel this off, multiply quickly in my head, 10 times 9, 90, oh, go down, divide by 3, 30, and 40, 120. Okay, so it gets us around 120. I hope I did that right. Now, you could do this with the keystrokes in your calculator as well. Very simple. You guys know how to do the permutation one? Combinations in the same setup. So we first push 10 in your calculator. You type in 10. Then what do you do? You go click on the math button, you go all the way over to probability, and then from there, you just select the one with this symbol, which I believe is one. I can't quite remember. And there you go. Then you push three at the end, and you get your number, and it should say one point or so. Okay, there we go. So, now we're looking at to win lotto 649, a person must correctly select six numbers between 1 and 49. Jasper selected six numbers from the birth dates of his family. So these are his six numbers from the birth dates of his family. How many different selections of numbers could he have made? So we want to know how many selections of numbers he could have made. So here's one selection, but what were the total amount of selections he could made out of the 649? So, if we look at 1 to 49, we have a total of 49 numbers. So, out of 49, we are choosing 6. Okay? So, 49, we choose 6. Now, what is that equal to? You can plug it into your calculator, or you could go this into the formula in your calculator, or you could go the long way and go 49. Factorial, that's going to be a big number. I'm not even sure if your calculator can compute it. It's such a huge number if you think about it. We'll put your multiply. 49 multiplied by 48, multiplied by 47, going on and on and on. It's a huge number. Okay, divided by 49, 6. Factorial, and then we have 6 factorial. So it's really only the first 6 going down to 49. Okay, that's it. So, that's the same as 49 factorial all over 43 factorial times 6 factorial. Plug it into your calculator, you get your answer, or use this way, it's faster. You'll get your answer, and that's how you do it. Okay? Now, because basically we have to divide by 6 factorial, because order doesn't matter. It just says as long as you have any 6 correct answers or 6 correct numbers, you win. Hey, if, if the first number drawn was a 9 and then it was a 3, Guess what? He still wins if he has all the numbers. It doesn't matter the order, just you have to have all the numbers. That's it. Okay. So, question example number three. So, an athletic council decides to make a subcommittee of seven members. So, we have an athletic council, say it's in school, which says they want a subcommittee of seven members. Now, there are 15 athletes of the councils on the, men, or on the board. We have nine males and six females. The subcommittee must contain exactly three females. So it must have three females. That's 
That's what it says. So, determine the number of ways of selecting only the females. Right now, we are looking at this, and we are selecting only the females. Okay? So, there we go. So, we are going to select only the females. So, let's take a look. How many females are there to choose from? We have nine females to choose from. And how many do we want? We only want three. It says only three. Okay? Now, let's look at the males. How many, this will give you a number. Now, how many males are there? Well, there are, oh, sorry, there's only six females. Sorry, I made a mistake there. Six females out of six females, we're only choosing three. So that's six multiplied by five, Multiply by 4, which is 120, divided by 6, which is equal to 20. Okay? So it's really just 5 times 4, which is equal to 20. There's 20 ways to choose those three females. Now, we have out of 9 males, altogether there are 7 people being chosen. So 9 minus 3 is equal to 4 males being chosen. So we're choosing 4. 9 choose 4 will give you another answer. Okay? Now, the subcommittee. So, how many ways are there selecting the subcommittee? So, if I look at this, we have females and males. Right? Females and males. So, anytime we normally say and, we use multiplication. So, we have 6 choose 3 multiplied by 9 choose 4. Because so we could have, we want 3 females and 9 males or sorry, three females and four males. And that will give you your answer there for you to calculate on your calculator, okay? Now, last part of this one, it says, how many ways can the subcommittee be selected if Bruce, the football coach, must be on it? So, we have a restriction. So still, does that affect the females? We still said there must be exactly three females. So the females aren't affected. Out of six females, I'm assuming Bruce is a male, unless it's a girl, with a, I'm just assuming it's a male here, okay? So six females, we want to choose three still, right? But now, we have one already selected, so we have one. So out of one, we're choosing one, which is just going to be one. So we don't really need to put that now, because that's Bruce. But now, how many males are left? If Bruce has to be on it, we only have eight other males to choose from, okay? To choose from eight other males, and we only want three other males, because we already used one for Bruce. So that means, out of the eight remaining males, we have to choose three. Well, what does that get us? You plug it into your calculator, and you'll get your answer. You don't have a calculator here right now, and I just don't want to waste your time just calculating it all by hand right now. So you're going to have to calculate that at home. Now, last question. Here we go. Class example number four. A standard deck of 52 cards has the following characteristics. Four suits. Well, in suits you have spades, clubs, diamonds, and hearts. Each suit has 13 cards. Okay? Now, uh, there are two suits are black and also two suits are red. Spades and clubs. And face cards are considered to be jack, queens, and kings. Aces are not faces. Now, poker is a card game played from a deck of 52 cards. So, how many different five card poker hands are there? So we just want to know how many different five card poker hands. Well, a queen of spades is different than a queen of hearts, isn't it? So there are 52 cards. So out of 52, we're choosing five. Now, order doesn't matter, because once you get cards when you're playing poker, or when you're playing a lot of card games, you can reorder them in your hand. So order doesn't matter. As long as you get the cards you want, order does not matter. So we have 52, choose five. Okay, that's all we have to do for this one. Plug that into your calculator, or else if you go the long way, 52, factorial, all over 52, minus five, factorial, multiplied by five, Factorial, which is the same as 52 factorial all over 47 factorial multiplied by 5 factorial. And that's it. So I would suggest just putting that one. It's a lot faster to calculate, but you have to know that this is equivalent to that. 
Okay, so next is how many of the hands will there be all diamonds? How many hands? How many of the hands uh, will there be all diamonds? How many hands can we have all diamonds? So, how many hands can we have of all diamonds? Well, so how many diamonds are there? There are 13 diamonds because there's 13 of each suit. So out of 13, we want to choose five. Okay? The next one. Four black cards and one red card. So four black cards and one red card. So we're going to go for this one. Now, this is where it gets tricky. I can't just say we have 26 black. Okay? 26 black, because if we go 13 times 2, 26 or half of 52, half the cards are black, so it's 26 black. We are only choosing 4. I cannot say 26 choose 5, even though the other one, because if we look at it in red, out of red we have 26, and we choose 1. I can't just say 26 choose 5. The fact, these will give us a different answer than 26 choose 5, because we have 4 black, and one red. And notice we have this and here, which means multiply. So we punch that into your calculator, multiply those together, and you'll get your answer. Okay? Simple. Now, next one gets a bit trickier. It's a hand that everyone wants, or a lot of people would want. Three kings and two queens. So, how many kings are there? There are four kings, because there's four of them. Each one, there's four kings. You have a queen, king of spades, king of hearts, a king of diamonds, and a king of clubs. So out of four kings, you want three of them. Oops, I should put a C. Out of four kings, you're choosing three of them. You're hoping to get three. Now, out of four queens, there's also four queens, you're choosing two. Notice here, we're not saying what is the probability. It says how many different combinations of them can you get. So it's not what is the probability, it's how many different combinations. So we look at this and we see what it gives us. And multiply that together and it will give you an answer. So now let's take a look at our last question. Or we're getting more. So now it says three kings and so what is the chance of getting three kings? That is just four, choose three. And then, well, it says we have to have five card hands. So if we have just three kings, we could have anything else. I could have of anything else, right? So if we're looking at only three kings, how many other cards are there? Well, there's 52 cards in the deck. Now we're looking at the kings, so the rest can't be kings. So we take away four. We are left with 48 cards. So left, we have 48 choose two, because there's two other cards to make up the hand. If we add these together, that gives us our 52. So we can have all 52 cards. So we multiply that together now, and that tells you what are your chances of getting three kings, and it doesn't matter what. Again. So, four aces. Well, I'm pretty sure the four aces will look like this. So, you have a chance of four, and you want to choose four. Okay? Probability of that is actually one. There's only one way to get it, which is four aces. Now, we are going to multiply this by, well, once again, the rest can't be an ace, can't. So, we only have 48 cards to choose from. And out of those 48, we just need one of any card. That's it. Multiply those together, that gives you that answer. Now the last one says five cards of the same suit. So we want five cards of the same suit. Well, we looked up here, we see how to get five cards that are diamonds. But now we want five cards of the same suit. So let's take a look at this. So First, let's do the diamonds. Out of 13, we're choosing five. So we could have five diamonds. Now, can we have five diamonds and five clubs? No, because then that's a 10 card hand. So we could say, or, so now we're going to add, we can have, out of 13, we could choose five clubs. 
or because we could have diamonds or clubs or we could have hearts so I have 13 hearts we could have five or out of 13 we could choose this is spades we could choose five there so now we multiply, we put all these together we add them up and that will give you your answer for that one. Because it's four. As soon as we say four, it's not me adding. It's like adding this multiple. Well, I hope you understand this lesson, and good luck with your assignment.